Welcome to the Cosmic Mystic Podcast, the space for healers, coaches, and conscious leaders on a mission to elevate collective consciousness. I'm your host, Danny C. Muniz, a former Catholic disciple turned eclectic witch, guiding you through the realms of astrology, spirituality, and the quest to escape the matrix. It's time to unleash the mystic within. Let the transformation begin. Hey, 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 my friend. Welcome back for our May energy forecast for 2024. This is where we break down all the things that are happening in May that you will want to know about what that energy is, how to navigate it, and just some thoughts for you um, as we move through this new month. So can you believe, first off, my friend, that we are in May? I'm excited because this is my birthday month. (laughs) This is one of my uh, favorite months of the year because I get to celebrate me all month long. So if you, if your birthday is in May, hello, welcome (laughs) to our May birthdays, the beginning of our astrological year. I always love this because we get the kick off with spring and then we get the kick off with Aries and then we get the kick off for me personally, with my brand new year. So in this video, or if you're listening on the podcast, um, the Cosmic Mystic Podcast, this video is all about May sidereal astrology. And so we'll talk about where our sun is and the two different zodiac signs that it is moving through this month. We'll talk about where our motivation is going to be with Mars. We'll talk about our communication and thinking with the Mercury moving out of retrograde. And actually it's already moved out of retrograde. So we'll see what that looks like as it moves forward into Aries. And then we'll also talk about Venus, our love, money, energy as we move through this May. Plus we've got a big change in Jupiter. Jupiter is changing signs this month. So we'll talk about Jupiter in its new sign and what that is bringing forward for us in this video. All right. So as I mentioned, this is on also on the Cosmic Mystic podcast. So if you are somebody that just wants to hear this or you you're want to listen to this again, and you don't necessarily need the visuals, then head on over to the Cosmic Mystic Podcast. You'll see the link down in the description box here if you're on YouTube. And if you're on the Cosmic Mystic Podcast and you want to catch those visuals as I share the charts, uh, feel free to head on over to the YouTube channel, Keeping It Real with Sidereal. All right, my friend, if we have not met, Danny C. Munis, intuitive, heal, intuitive astrologer, spiritual healer, and I'm excited to dive in. If you have not already subscribed or liked, followed all the things, feel free to do so. And I would love, love, love to hear your thoughts on this podcast or this YouTube uh, video in the comments below. All right, let me go ahead and share my screen, get started, grab your pen, grab your notebook, whatever it is that you need to take some notes because we are about to get started. All right, and as we begin, we can see here that our sun is right here in Aries as we kick off on May 1st. Our sun is still in Aries. So we will be navigating Aries energy over the first few weeks of May. And so I do want to talk about some of the aspects that we do see here with the sun um, in currently in, (coughs) excuse me, certainly in Aries, but we'll see a couple of things here. So we can see that we've got this square uh, sextile over here to Saturn. So this is the current energy that is influencing uh, the sun, our consciousness, right? So if we look at sun sextile, Saturn, we're going to see a bit, um, a really nice energy of, because remember, a sextile is very collaborative, it's very supportive energy, and so this is really helping us 
push those new ideas forward, right? We're in, as I said, Mercury retrograde is over. So it's really like we're pushing, we're ready to kind of push things forward. Now you'll see in a bit when we start talking about Mars that our drive and motivation is still in that very dreamy, collective, um, connected to source, spirit, God type energy. And so we're not tight, we're not quite ready to really be in full action just yet. So I kind of want to give you that insight of like we're not quite ready to go full force into action. But the sextile here with Saturn is really helping us like get really cool get clearer, not super clear, but clearer on where we're going, what we're headed to headed towards. And really just getting our our energy and our connection um, ready, right? So I really love the supportive energy of Saturn that can do that. Now, on the flip side of that, Saturn can also be a little Debbie Downer-ish, right? It can be the energy where it's like wanting to hold us a bit, hold us back a bit, and help us notice our boundaries. I say this all the time with Saturn, but Saturn is simply there to help us notice <laughs> the box that we are in. It's helping us notice where we are, right? What our limitations are. And it's for us to notice, right? Now with Jupiter, it's for us to push past and kind of expand through that. But, but Saturn is just helping us identify where we are and what the limitations are with that. And so that can sometimes feel a little depressing, right? It can feel like we can get sad and get frustrated or maybe even angry because it's like, why am I here? <laughs> why am I still here? Right? So we want to just keep that in mind as we are moving through that energy. All right. So the next one I want to talk about is you see if we can advance here, you'll see that we move into the aspect of Uranus. So We've been talking last month, we talked about the Jupiter Uranus conjunction that really um, became in its full power on the 20th of April. So we're still, you know, feeling some of that energy here, but this is now the sun is conjunct Uranus. And so, you know, <laughs> Uranus is that beautiful planet that, that loves to shake things up. So remember, with Uranus here, there's unexpected changes. There's more um, sense of freedom and rebellion. It's an excited type energy. There's this strong urge to break free from the monotony, <laughs> where Saturn loves that consistency. Uranus is like, nope. Nope, we want to break free. And so with our sun still being here in Aries, and it's pretty much going to be through most of the rest of Aries season, it's going to be uh, connected until the 18th, right after we move into Taurus season. And so really expect some shifts, expect some um, opening to higher vibrations, opening to um, unexpected opportunities, opening to... Um, finding a sense of freedom for yourself. So whatever that is for you and wherever you're at in this life, like whatever that is, like this, this shift, this change, a number of consciousness, okay, that is of self. Uh, Uranus is, is here to bring that shift and that change to shake things up for us. And so with the sun being in Aries, it's all about self. And the sun is our consciousness. So it's how we decide to change self, not necessarily the physical environment, but more so self and the actions that self is doing. All right, so let's take a look at the next one that's coming through here on the 10th. We're going to see Jupiter come in right here. So we've got the conjunction, as we've said, we've had with Uranus and Jupiter, but now it's connecting with all three of them. When we add Jupiter here into the mix, we are, it's a surge of optimism, of good luck, of happiness. Jupiter is such a happy, um, elated planet. It's all about growth and expansion. And so this is really, really beautiful time right here to start new projects, 
especially things towards personal or professional development. So joining a program, starting a new thing, starting a new like wellness routine, starting a new way of working, a new way of being. This is a really good time for that. Expansion is key here. It's the theme here. With any time we're talking about Jupiter, it's going to expand whatever is there. So although I may be talking about, oh, it's, oh, it's a really great time for new projects, and it's a really good time to grow and expand, and there's this optimism. If that is not your current reality, it is going to expand whatever is there. So if you are struggling, there may be some optimism about, like, I can get out of this. But it's not necessarily going to expand into this new opportunity for you unless you decide to shift that energy, okay, and allow yourself to be open to the expansion. So this is a really good time for, like I said, for starting the new things, for getting things going, but pay attention to what is currently there because it's going to expand whatever is there. Um, so it can um, magnify any of those kind of negative things that may be playing in the background. So just want to, you know, keep an eye on that as well. And then the next one is we're going to have this sextile over here with Neptune. So, oh, we've also got Venus coming in. So we've got this energy here, as I talked about, changing things up, expanding there, and really allowing these changes to kind of settle in for the long run, settle in for the greater good, as we notice the boundaries that need to be shifted, the things that are making us feel like we're imprisoned, okay, the self-imprisonment. Now, when Venus, let's talk about when Venus pops in here. So when Venus pops in here, and then we'll talk about Neptune. <clears throat> Venus pops in here, we've got this expression of love and creativity and beauty wanting to come through. It's like, it's a time for giving and receiving. And this is just kind of amplified in this energy. So we might find ourselves wanting to be around people more, connect with more people, having, you know, parties and events, just kind of gathering with people. And it's a really good time to expand finances because Venus does rule value uh, and money, right, is a sense of value. And so we have this um, opportunity here, especially with this Jupiter, of like these shifts and these changes in those areas of your life. All right, now let's talk about that Neptune. This Neptune's coming in here. Right here we can see Saturn falls off, Jupiter pops in. And so when we see this Neptune, this is really bringing in that intuition, that imagination, that creativity. So we're really bringing that psychic awareness here. So pay attention to the dreams, pay attention to the ideal future that you're creating within your mind and holding on to that image, right? Holding on to those ideas, aligning the frequency, doing the uh, regulating the nervous system so that it can shift its, uh, what is it, temperature, right? Shift its gauge to be able to receive the information that is coming through. Because oftentimes all these things are happening all around us all the time, but our awareness is not picking up on them because we are not aligning ourselves because of our, you know, past stresses and traumas and experiences that are actually filtering how we're seeing things. So during this time, I'm going to invite you to be open, right? To be open to receiving, being open to the possibilities, being open and being crystal clear about what it is that you desire. What is it through this whole period here that I'm talking from May 1st all the way to 13th with all of this sun's transits? I want you to keep in mind, what is it that you're going for? What is it that you're desiring? What is it that you want to manifest? And being crystal, crystal clear on what that is. 
what is it that you want if it if you if i let me give you an example here because I, I see this a lot and i just wrapped up my cosmic alignment group uh last week and it's running again in june so i'll let you know when that happens again but one of the things that i notice is every time i do it and i notice for myself and i notice for those that don't do it is the clarity on what it is that we want Every time I do my daily intention sheet, which is part of cosmic alignment, and I script out what I want for my day, I, I noticed that I started to get very general and it repeated. Like it was often the same thing, the same thing, the same thing. And just last week, I asked myself, I'm like, how specific can I actually get here? And so I got so specific in what it was that I desired. I got very specific about, I wanted my day to be filled with peace and joy. And I got specific about what does it look like for me to have peace in my day? And so I looked at how do I want to feel? How does peace look as I feel it? How do I feel right when I'm peaceful? What does that look like for me in my day? It was when I'm feeling peaceful or when peace is flowing through me, irritations don't bother me. <laughs> that was key for me. Irritations don't bother me. Or as I'm navigating, right, with joy, and what does joy look like? Well, it's, it's, I have a joyful energy around doing work that I maybe is a little bit like not my favorite, <laughs> right? And so it was like, what can I bring into my environment to create joy so that like I can allow that energy to flow through me? And so it was really good for me to like get really clear. So I'm gonna invite you over these first few weeks here as we move through the rest of Aries season and we have these transits is to look at what is it that you desire and be super, super specific. If it's something that you're desiring in the next six months, in the next year, or maybe it's in the next month or longer, in the next five to 10 years, get really crystal clear on what it is. What will you actually be doing? What does that actually look like? What do those words mean to you? What is that? How does that show up in your life? All right, let's go ahead and dive into our next transit <laughs> with our sun. So our sun will move out of, there we go. It will go out of Aries, out of Aries and into Taurus right here on the 14th. And so we'll see all of these kind of cultivate here on the 14th still as we begin to move through these. So when the sun moves into Taurus, our consciousness, right, because our sun is our consciousness, shifts from that very action-oriented, competitive, um, warrior, determined, headstrong, impatient, impulsive energy into a grounded, focused, and determined energy. Taurus is the energy of, uh, it's the element of earth. It is ruled, um, wow, my brain literally just froze as to what Oh, Tor of Venus. I was like, why am I stuck? That was that was interesting. Uh, Venus is, is what rules Taurus. And so there's this element of comfort. There's this element of beauty. And so when I, I'm a Taurus sun, so when I think of the Taurus energy and I see how the Taurus energy plays out in my own life, it's a very um, stubborn. <laughs> it's a very um slow it loves to live within its comforts and so sometimes it can be harder during towards season to push yourself out it's almost as if we get going with aries and you'll see that mars will be moving into aries very soon and as it does that we are able to start moving forward our consciousness is trying to slow things down but our motivation and drive is wanting to move forward. So Taurus season is a time to kind of like come in and kind of put the ducks back in the row. Because air is kind of like, it's kind of throwing things at the wall. It's kind of testing things. It's kind of 
playing with things. It's like, let me just do this. Let me just do that. And Taurus is like, okay, let's come back. <laughs> let's center. <laughs> let's ground our energy in. Let's, <coughs> let's surround ourselves with what feels good because it tunes into the senses. And then we can move forward. Taurus season is the best time to kind of sit down and get settled in to settle in nice and cozy to the thermostat, to the gauge of where it is that you want to go, which is why I say in these first couple of weeks, what is it that you want? What is it that you want to do? And then we come here, we ground that energy in. So we're up here, we're in the airy fairy, we're in the spiritual, and we bring that energy down into the tangible, into the material. Taurus is very much tangible. It wants to touch it, wants to feel it, wants to smell it, wants to taste it. It's very much material, very much tangible. So this is where our consciousness is now moving. So you can think about for yourself how you might be able to use this energy. For some of you, our fire and our air friends, you are probably going to struggle a little bit more because it's going to want to pull you down. And you're like just wanting to go, but it's wanting to pull you down. My earth and water friends, you're probably like, whew, good, I get a break, <laughs> which is what personally I love. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and look at a couple of other transits that we're going to have here. You'll see, you know, we still have these guys going on, right? We still have Jupiter, we still have Uranus, Venus, and Neptune, but now we've pulled in Pluto. And Pluto, as you may know, is our planet of transformation, deep experiencing, getting below the surface. And so where our interest here is to dive into things, is to get below things, get under things, and kind of unearth things. So there's a lot of influence, there's a lot of power here, because Pluto is a very powerful energy. Um, it's a good time to kind of like clear things out and make room. So if you're looking to clear maybe some old ideas, some past beliefs, some traumas, excellent time right in here. And the sun will be trying Pluto until the 27th of um, May. So we have about 11 days or so with this energy that we can use to really allow ourselves to go deep, to do some deeper work. I highly recommend getting involved in some um, healing work, taking a, a course or going through a program. As a matter of fact, if you're local to me in uh, Texas, in, <laughs> excuse me, Hill Country, you'll want to um, check out the four tea ceremonies that we're doing in May, one in, or three in May, one in June. And they're all about love, trust, wisdom, and flow. I'm diving deep through with herbs and ceremony to bring in this beautiful energy of the goddess. So um, I'd love to have you. There is a, just a link in the description or show notes for you so you can check that out. All right, next one we have, um, actually I think that is it for the sun. <laughs> I was like, wait, I think there's, there's not. We're gonna have these, you'll see these start to pop off here in just a bit. We've got, um, Uranus leaving here, and then we'll see <clears throat> Jupiter fall off. We'll also see Neptune fall off, and then we will see the Venus stay until uh, June. So that will be um, all the way through June. There goes Pluto on the 29th, and then we end our month still connected to Venus. And so Venus is going to be influencing us throughout the month, and you're going to see that in June, Jupiter is going to be moving into Taurus, and that's that's going to be there for a year. And that's a big shift that's going to happen. When it does that, right, we're influencing this energy here. I've been talking about this, or I've been, you know, telling my clients and people who, you know, I get to connect with about this Jupiter energy and the shift around. I feel like there's a big shift in what we value and the way our currency is currently run. There's a big shift in that happening over this next year as Jupiter moves into Taurus. And we'll talk about that in just a bit, but I wanted to kind of give you that as a heads up because, you know, Venus is there and when Jupiter pops in there, there's really going to be this energy of 
of shift in the way that we see value and understand value. All right, let's get back over here and we're going to now move from the sun and I want to talk really quick about the full moon in that we have this month and that is going to be in um, <laughs> on May 23rd and that is, let me pull up the chart here. All right, and it is at 8.52 Central. So let's put that in here. Okay, so adjust to your time. <laughs> All right, so you can see here, this is our chart for the full moon in Scorpio. So Taurus and Scorpio. Taurus and Scorpio are opposite signs of each other. So where Taurus is the material, Scorpio is the ethereal. It's very, it's, it's the complete opposite. Where Taurus wants its comforts and it wants to be safe and secure, Scorpio wants to up up upheaval. It wants the transformation. It wants to bring things up from the earth and look at them. It doesn't want to shy away from anything. It wants to go there. <laughs> Where Taurus is like, mm, I don't want to go there. <laughs> I don't want to go there. Scorpio wants to go there. And so there's this, this battle of what it is that we value, what it is that we desire, what it is that that's comfortable for us and the transformation that we seek. This is something I talk to my clients to all the time is there's the present moment of where they are, of what they want, of what they have, and then there's what they want. And it's looking at what are the behaviors, what are the thoughts, what are the beliefs, what are the paradigms that we have that are keeping us here? Because if we want to truly change my friend and get to that other part to get to that other side of the thing that we desire we have to realize <coughs> why we are where we are because there is our nervous system is keeping us safe our subconscious is keeping us safe in the current way that we do things it wants to protect us. It wants to keep us set. So it's set, right, at a particular gauge, at a particular temperature, so to speak, a frequency, you might say. And so because of this, we are comfortable here. And so trying to get to the other thing is a lot harder. And we know that if we get to the other thing, <laughs> we're, we'll have what we desire. But yet, we don't believe that is actually possible in many cases, or there's a, an underlying second gain that we receive from it. So this is why Scorpio is here to kind of help us do that deeper work, to see what that is, to get below the surface, to get below what the consciousness thinks it is, get into the nervous system, and whether it's us releasing that, you know, and showing the nervous system that it's okay, giving it its space, changing the beliefs, whatever that might be, so that we can move through. So there's a lot of this energy here with the Jupiter, <clears throat> with Venus, that we can look at from a sense of, you know, with Venus, we're looking at our emotional needs. Are they being met or are they unmet? Um, with Jupiter, we might be looking at maybe I want to put myself out there. Maybe I want to lose the weight. Maybe I want to increase um, my sense of self-worth, but I am afraid of the attention that I might get when I do that. Whether I get people commenting on my stuff uh, negatively, or maybe I get people complimenting me in a, a way that doesn't feel good to me, or however that may be for you. Maybe it's attention that you don't feel safe receiving. Now, Uranus, right, um, he's wanting to up, upheaval things. He's wanting to change things. Mainly, 
to allow us to have flexibility. Sometimes we get very rigid in how we're doing things. And so Uranus is really here with this full moon to say, how flexible can you be? How adaptable can you be? Because I feel like for me, and I see this in my clients as well, is the more adaptable and flexible we can be in the moment, whether we're working with somebody as a coach, a healer, a practitioner, whether or we're a conscious leader of somebody who's managing a team or leading a team, the more flexible that we can be, or even as a parent, right, with your kids, as they're growing in age, sometimes it, we get stuck in a current age that they might be or a current experience that you have. And it's like that shifts as they get older, that shifts as they grow and they change, right? From maybe wanting, you know, to be around mom as a as a, a toddler, or even into elementary school, and then getting to the point of like, drop me off on the corner, <laughs> I don't want to be seen with you, right? It shifts and changes. And then as a college student, like they want to go out and find their own freedom and expression. So we can use Uranus here as that adaptability. How can we be flexible? How can we be more adaptable as we move through these changes? All right, so that is our full moon <laughs> uh, in Scorpio on the 23rd. Now, let's talk about Mars and our motivation. So Mars is <laughs> our drive and motivation. It is what is that gas in the car. It fuels us to do things, to move forward in our life. And so currently, as we begin May, Mars is in Pisces. This has been more of a chill vibe. <laughs> we have wanted to kind of relax. We have not been as ambitious. And our motivation is more on slowing down, on taking the breaks that we need, on dreaming, visualizing, connecting with source, with God, the spirit, the universe. And it is currently here, conjunct Neptune, which I've had a lot of people, including myself, tell me, like, I've just been so tired. I just feel so tired. I just feel so tired. And it's like Neptune and Pisces, right? Neptune rules Pisces is telling us to slow down, telling us to get some more rest because our rest is important not only for our bodies, right, but also for our mind and the connection to source. When we are in a relaxed state, we are then able to receive more insights, more information, have more clarity, have more space within ourselves. And so this period of Mars resting is important. However, our society, right, is all about action, 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 go, 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 do, do, do. And so the, the beauty of astrology, the beauty of nature is that it runs in cycles. And so the current cycle is rest, just like with our moon. If you've ever heard me talk about the moon and the four elements, earth, air, fire, well, air, no, we were right now. Fire, earth, air, water. Each one of those has a certain feel or flow to it that can help us actually be super productive and in the best place for our vibe, so to speak. I learned this from Vanessa Corazon with Moonsight Planner years ago, and I absolutely loved her concept of using the elements to actually be the best productive person you could be because we take action in the fire in the earth we are getting into like we're grounding that energy in and getting into things in the air it's the brainstorming ideas and in the water it's the resting it's the taking care of self and so mars right now it doesn't like being here because it's causing it to slow down and so, my friend, you might not be wanting to slow down, but this energy is telling you to slow down. So Mars will be in this energy until June 1st. So throughout our entire May, 
where might feel less motivated to go after our goals in a traditional way. We might be wanting to pursue more spiritual or emotional drives or triggers that we're wanting to like work through or look at or discover. And even pausing, taking more downtime, allowing ourselves to rest more. That is the key during this cycle. Now, there are a couple of uh, transits that Mars is going to be encountering that I do want to touch on. And so one of those being uh, Mars and Pluto. So let me show you. We have this here. And so, as I said, we have that Neptune energy still. But Mars with Pluto, it's Mars sextile Pluto. <clears throat> it is being able to tackle more complex ideas and projects and really being able to stay focused and break things down. So as we enter into this first part of May, whatever your goals are, whatever you're striving toward, as I said, right, we're focusing on these ideas on what it is that you want to create and get really clear and helping us to get really focused and breaking that down into really simple, easy ideas, tasks that we can do, right? Um, we want to make sure that we're really being very de more deliberate than anything with this particular energy. Now, the last one I want to talk about is uh, Chiron. And so we're going to see this towards the end of the month. And you'll see both of these guys fall off. <clears throat> and then as we get into 21st of the month, right here, we're going to see Chiron pop in here. So Chiron, as we've talked about before, is our deepest wounds. It is the, the wounded healer is what they often say. So this transit with Mars conjunct Chiron brings issues to the forefront. <laughs> it is urging us to resolve some unresolved problems. And so with still in this very um, dreamy energy of being able to receive from source, from God, from the universe, what it is that needs to be healed and using that, working with. So like the healing during this time, for those of you that are healers, really focusing on bringing in the energy of the divine, of God, the universe, bringing that energy in to help support, calling upon the archangels, right? Goddesses, bringing that energy in to work with you through your healing. That is what's key here, especially with this Chiron, <clears throat> the Chiron energy, um, because we can often feel with this particular connection here, this particular transit, feelings of helplessness and under motivation. And it can come across in a more passive, aggressive way. Now, I know you don't want to do that and you're healing and you're becoming a better human. And so you want to be able to come from a healed aspect of self and not from your wound. And so working through some of these things here is going to be key. Calling in, you know, if it's God, calling in God and saying, God, work with me, right, to release, to remove, to identify what my next steps are as it relates to this, right? You're bringing in that source, okay, to work with, right, to work with, always to work with. Remember, they cannot work without our permission. Okay, let's move into one of my favorite planets, Mercury, our trickster. Now, Mercury has been in retrograde pretty much through the entire month of April. So it moved out of retrograde on the 25th of April, and so it is direct. And as we see here, it is still currently in Pisces. It will be moving into Aries. But right here, we can see it kicks off in Pisces. And so our motivation, our drive right here, I'm sorry, our thinking and communication moving into Mercury is in still in that very dreamy energy, that very 
imagine it's a creative intuitive energy and so as we're in this mercury period with pisces i want you to just allow yourself to be in that creative energy right i've been talking about this and that imaginative intuitive energy of knowing exactly what to do if you're trying to figure out i don't know what to do around x y and z allowing yourself to trust your intuition to daydream to meditate and to go off and connect to the divine god source the universe and receive whatever it is that you are meant to receive <clears throat> information super super valuable my friend all right so we have a couple of these transits at the very beginning of this month here we have that cut down chiron which we talked about in our last um, um overview <laughs> energy forecast i was like what, what do we do as you can see i'm really feeling this <laughs> mercury in um mercury in pisces energy my thoughts are a little confused at the moment okay so here we go moving into aries so i had talked last month about mercury moving into aries because it moved into aries it was in aries for a couple of days and then it went retrograde but when our mercury is in aries our thinking and thoughts are quick fast impulsive our communication is more blunt and aggressive. It's straight to the point. We don't really care about the fluff. We just want to get to the details. Just give me the bullet points. Just give me the quick ideas, quick ideas so that I can make a decision. Aries in Mercury just wants to get to the decision as quick and as fast as it possibly can. It doesn't care about all the details. It doesn't care about this or that or whatever. Sometimes it doesn't even have the forethought to like think all the way through something. It just wants like, okay, I need to go this way. This is the route to get there, that one, right? You know how um, GPS, <laughs> it's a great example of this. GPS, when you set your course, right? Of your directions of where you wanna go. And you know how sometimes it gives you multiple ways that you can go down that route. Aries is like, it just hits it and it's like, go. <laughs> it sees like, you just hit start. I don't know. I use Google Maps. And so whenever the directions come up, they come up and it's like you just can hit start. You don't even have to look at the directions. You just hit start and it just goes. That's Aries. It just wants to give me the give me the give me the thing. Give me where I need to go. I'm off. I'm running. I'm there. So I want you to think about that as you're moving through this. If you need to get into action, if you need to be a little bit more blunt or aggressive because maybe you haven't been and you need to start opening that opening that aspect of you out right opening up your throat chakra to be able to communicate um, and express more this is a great time to do it now again be mindful that uh everybody is in this <laughs> everybody doesn't have this for sight that you do and so we could receive on the receiving end of aggression, receiving end of bluntness of like, I don't care about your story. Just tell me the facts. <laughs> my dad used to tell my mom all the time, uh, Reader's Digest version, please. I don't need the whole story. I don't need the whole thing. Just give me the bullet points, right? Notice that, that is you might even be feeling that as we move into this um, energy. So the main transits that I really want to look at for Mercury happen towards the end of the month. And I'm going to just go ahead and scoop down here. We're going to see Mercury sextile Saturn. So this is where our thinking gets clearer. We have good judgment. Our organizational skills are like, let's go. Let's do this. This is a great time to catch up on things research, study, paperwork, like catching up because our concentration and our memory is more focused and disciplined, uh, especially with our sun being in Taurus. This is like, whoosh, let's get work done. If you want the productivity period, it's going to come right here at the end of the month when our, our Mercury is sextile, <clears throat> sorry, Saturn. And that's uh, May 24th all the way to the end of the month, till the 31st. All right, let's move on to our next one. And that final one is going to be um, Mercury conjunct 
Uranus. So we've heard a lot about Uranus over this past couple of months, but we're going to bring Uranus in right here in a second. There you go. You can see the conjunction here on the 28th, so at the very, very end of the month. This is stimulating our mental and com communication. Uh, so you might see like you're wanting to communicate more. You're, there's lots of thoughts coming through. Um, tasks that involve innovation, originality, inventiveness. These are all good times for this. So if you're trying to figure out how to do something new, how to do something differently, this <clears throat> is the time that you're going to want to do this. So it wants, it's trying to disrupt, right? We've seen this with Uranus, disrupt the patterns, disrupt the way you do something. And so being Uranus conjunct your uh, Mercury right here is just changing that all up for us, disrupting our patterns of thinking so that we can bring in the new. So I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to that one. <laughs> all right. The last Last two things I want to talk about is Venus moving into Aries, and then I want to talk about um, Jupiter moving into Taurus. So Venus in Aries uh, will be moving, well, moved into Aries on the 25th of April. So as we kick off our month here, we'll see that Venus is already, clear that for us, Venus is already here in Aries at eight degrees. So when Venus is in Aries, because Venus rules love, beauty, and money, there is more of a spontaneity to love, beauty, and money. There's this energy of action. There's this energy of uh, strong passion or excitement towards those ideas. So there's more boldness, freshness, impatience in our relationships in the way we're going about, if you're somebody that is dating, in the way that maybe you're approaching, right? So if you're someone who is maybe a little bit more shyer, like this is the, the energy where you're like, to take that bold action. We can also see this with making offers for those of you that are uh, healers, coaches, practitioners, uh, entrepreneurs, right? Making offers to people. This is a good time to do that because we're in that boldness, we're in that energy of, um, bravery of just doing it just putting it out there so this is this is a really beautiful time it's also a good time because on the receiving end we're like that's what i want that's what i need and we're more apt to take the action and purchase the thing um than than not than like kind of waiting on oh, let me check let me make sure let me do this it's like oh no i want that um our energy is focused on moving forward doesn't care about the past. It just wants to move forward. Um, as I said, the 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 way that we're communicating and working within the relationships are more straightforward, no sugarcoating, very honest and straightforward. Um, not a lot of pet, not pettiness. <clears throat> it just wants to like get to the point, get down to get down to business, right? As I said, Aries likes to get to a decision. So you might even feel that as it relates to money, love, and beauty. I want to get to a decision about this. I want to get to a completion of this, whatever that might be for you. All right, the last thing is Jupiter in Taurus. So as I mentioned, Jupiter moves into the energy of Taurus on the 1st and will actually be in Taurus all the way through till May 14th of 2025. <clears throat> so we've got a whole year of Jupiter being in Taurus. And so Jupiter being that planet of growth and expansion, wanting to grow and expand where whatever energy is there. Taurus is, as I mentioned at the top of this, very grounded. Uh, it's ruled by Venus, so it's that money, love, beauty, energy. It's the comforts, it's convenience, it's the material, the senses, moving through the senses. And so all of that is going to be expanded during this period while Jupiter is in Taurus. So look out for shifts in money, in the way that we relate to money, the way that we work with money, the way that we use money. It's something that I've been <clears throat> feeling coming through for a long time. And that's, we've already see it starting to shift, right? Even more so now, we're gonna see it move even bigger in this next year. The same thing with how we value things and what we value. 
that again is also look out for a big shift in that. And so personally, but also collectively. So as a collective energy, we will be shifting the way that we are valuing things. So again, good or bad, <laughs> it's just, it's shifting. And also in the area of love. So if we look at love <clears throat> relationships with Jupiter in Taurus, it's more of the um, comforting energy. It's more of the supportive energy and wanting that and seeking that and desiring that in our relationships. And so wanting to grow that. So looking for ways to connect deeper in the sense of comfort and how the relationship brings comfort or even how you might be seeking comfort. Now, the other things I talked about earlier with our comfort zones, <coughs> Because choice likes to be comfortable, right? It likes to be in its comfort. And so noticing that it's going to push us or want to push us outside of those comforts. So being able to push past some of those comforts that we have, and which is what Uranus and Jupiter together have been doing over this past uh, month or so. And so more of that kind of peeking out for us to then make the change. So this is causing the disruption so that we bring it to our awareness that something is it's not feeling right, something's off, something's not working. And once we have that information, then we can do something with it. So I'm really excited for this shift in Jupiter and what that's going to bring for us. As always, it's going to bring things that are probably moving towards what we believe is the right and there will probably be things that we don't want to happen. And <clears throat> this is all part of the journey. And why I said at the, also at the very beginning that Uranus is here is causing these disruptions to from at the core to allow us to learn how to be adaptable and flexible. All right, my friend, this wraps up our energy forecast for the month of May 2024. I would love to hear what you are taking away from this episode. Go ahead and let me know down in the comment section down below if you're catching this on YouTube. If you're on the podcast, come on over to the Cosmic Mystic Podcast on Instagram and let me know your thoughts. All right, my friend, have a great day and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.